Phil and Susan Urschler. They became the first married couple to climb the highest peaks on each of the seven continents. Before they met, Phil and Susan Urschler may have spent years climbing different mountains, but it wasn't until they got together this couple truly reached their peak. Easy at sea level. Everything's easy at sea level. My challenge always was, how does a non-climber mentally and physically prepare to climb Everest? I fell back on my business life. You can reach your impossible dream, whether that's personally or professionally. We did find there's a few rules that are very helpful along the way. Vision drives activity. If we can do one thing and it's just commit to that vision, then the right activity follows. One important lesson that we all have to learn is to adapt to our environment that yes. we find ourselves in. How do you do that mentally? I never saw myself as a climber, but I needed to. And so I had to adapt to that environment. Mm -hmm. What I do is well before I get there, I do a lot of visualization. Mm -hmm. So I keep a summit picture of Everest. I keep a picture of being on stage, being recognized mm -hmm. for top performance at work, mm -hmm. going to President's Club, whatever that happens to be, being mm -hmm. the top CEO, mm -hmm. you know, keeping that vision in mind. You You've worked in the corporate world for more than 20 years. What lessons have you learned from mountain climbing that you can translate into success at the workplace? I really boil it all down to three P's, project, mm -hmm. prepare, persevere. So how do you do the impossible when you can't afford to fail? Three essentials. Number one is project, project your future. Number two is prepare. And then number three is persevere. And by this point, I had been promoted to a director and had a $300 million objective. Now I had this dream. I wanted to take my team at work and become the top performing team in the entire company. And then on the personal side of my life, I wanted to climb Everest with Phil and finish this Seven Summit dream. One big problem, you've got Everest in the way. 29,035 feet, you've got to climb up there where the 747s fly. My life came down to two quantifiable goals, 29,035 feet top Everest and a $300 million revenue objective. In my corporate life, the question was, how are you gonna blow away 300 million? Just go out there and start selling? I don't think so. We always had to push back from the business and put a plan together. Sue and Phil Ursula returned from one of the most difficult challenges of their lives. That was reaching the top of Mount Everest. Congratulations, it's quite an achievement. Made history. I wrote 29,035 feet on a yellow sticky and I put one on my computer at work, one on my computer at home. That number's high. When I wrote it down, I thought, that's impossible. But what I found was by just looking at it over the course of months, every single day, it became doable in my mind. I can go there. Now, of course, we stole that right out of our business practices. First thing we did with the $300 million is post it so the entire organization could see it every day, every moment because that was our vision, that's where we're going. And then also for me, I had to write it in my um, business journal in front of my client notes because to get some kind of time management with all we have coming at us, it's the only way I could figure it out. It's like every morning of every workday, that's what we do. All activities associated with that 300 million, get rid of outsource, delegate, find a great partner, whatever, but don't do the rest of that stuff. There's only one of us. But you must understand, Phil's always in great shape. Let alone keep up with him, I can never beat him in the mountains. So I thought, this might be my opportunity. <laughs> I know, I know. I wasn't gonna hurt him, I just wanted to beat him. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we start walking. What I loved about it is on that day, we truly became a team and we now share this common vision. And honestly, for any of us to stand on top, it took that type of team. It's so important in climbing, as I know it is in our businesses, to climb with people we trust and climb with people who care about our success. Over 60 eight-foot ladders can be used to fix that entire ice fall. Sometimes four ladders can be lashed together to get us over those really wide ones. Now that sounds quite sensible, but when you're walking across them, there's this real unnerving bounce, and then they start swaying. And then if you look down in there, they appear to be bottomless. 
they can be well over 100 feet deep. Breaking it down makes a difference. And then putting a plan together of all those manageable pieces. How do you climb Everest? Just go over there and start climbing? There actually is a well thought out documented plan before you ever leave your country to go climb Everest. Here's our plan. We're going to start at base camp at 17,500 feet. We're going to climb up to camp one, almost 20,000 feet, spend a night. Climb up to camp two, 21,000 feet, spend a night or two, and come all the way back down, rest and recover for days. Then we're going to climb through those camps, spending nights, then climb on up to camp three, 24,000 feet come all the way back down, rest and recover for days. You spend a tremendous amount of time climbing up and down Mount Everest. That's what allows us to stand up there without passing out. Having a leadership element of that plan is, is critical as well. You know, when I think of us as leaders, as business owners, it is similar to what guides do in the mountains. As a guide, you've got to be excited about those people making the summit, not yourself. And you've also got to get those people to believe that they can push past those perceived boundaries and also to guide from the front of the rope. You can't push a rope uphill. Whenever we reach top performance, there's a lot of other people who help get us there. There's Sherpas in every organization. I know the top performers in my organization went out and built such strong relationships throughout the company that people just wanted to help them. I had a couple of great mentors at work that really helped me reach success. I am extremely fortunate to be married to my mentor and my hero and my guide. There were times on these climbs that I couldn't carry all the stuff in my pack. He took it in his every time. He'd help me keep my head in the game when I wanted to quit. I wanted to succeed for Phil and Phil's the reason that I enjoyed so much success in the mountains. Two times we didn't make the top of Everest, but each time we just regrouped, refocused, reset the goal. And also, as we learn here, no doesn't necessarily mean no. If you're going after the right thing, in fact, no means not yet. We are now going for the summit. And we have climbed on the mountain for over two months, climbing up and down this mountain, acclimatizing ourselves to the thinner air. And we're going for the summit. We're very excited because we have surpassed the balcony of where we turned around the year before. And then after many, many hours, we are finally in position to go for the summit. And, you know, we all have images in our minds of moments that are important to us, just as individuals. This is one of mine. Those beautiful, jagged Himalayas against the blue sky in the morning sun and all that that represented, I'll never forget that image. I had time to take it all in because here's your rate of climb. You're at three breaths a step. You're for hours. And, and then all the emotions. I, I think every emotion I've ever had is converging on you at that moment. And most of it's just extreme happiness. You're so happy for yourself. You're so happy for your team. And then I, we're just like steps away from the summit and I lost it. I couldn't control the tears because I'm hearing Phil behind me yelling, you made it, baby, you made it. And finally, at 10.20 in the morning on May 16th, Phil and I took that last step and we ended up standing on the top together. <laughs> that was definitely the best day of my life. That sense of accomplishment to stand there with Phil was worth all the pain, the hard work, the sacrifice, and the effort. And now you got to get back down.
I wish you great success as you pursue your dreams. And remember, when you get to the top of your mountain, don't forget to celebrate, okay? Thank you very much. Thanks. Disneyland. To Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs>